Church, we're going to dive right into God's Word. If you brought your Bible, you're going to want to pull it out and turn with me to Jeremiah 18. But if you didn't, it's okay. The verses are on the screen, but we're going to start right here, all standing for the reading of God's Word. And in Jeremiah 18, Jeremiah 18, verse 1, it says this. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the potter's shop and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me, that's obedience, and found the potter working at his wheel. But the jar he was making didn't turn out as he had hoped. So he what? He crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Ooh. It is as if God is saying, I can break down something and make something new and beautiful out of it. Church, if you feel crushed, if you feel broken, I believe that God has given us a word to go through together as a community. But let us start and give God praise for what he's about to do. Praise in advance for what he's about to do in our lives. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we say, have your way, God. Speak to us, mold us, shape us, refine us, so that we can be images of your glory to stand and worship you. And thank you for how you have seen us through even life's broken moments. To you be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes. Well, welcome to the Father's house. Y'all can go ahead and grab a seat. I'm so grateful that you guys are here and excited. Why? Well, because this week we were going to start a series through the book of Haggai, Ruins to Revival. But I just, in my, in my heart, in my gut, in my knowing, in my feeling, I just felt like I think we just need to take a collective pause and catch our breath. I felt kind of like I had to like lick my finger and be like, okay, where's the spirit of God blowing? Because that's the word I want to give. I don't mean rush because I've been excited about the series Haggai. We've been working on it. We have a PDF and resource that we want to give everyone for free. It's a free DF. But I just wanted to, and it's free 99. You're welcome. Thanks to those that give and sow to the house. There you go. But I wanted to pause. I wanted to pause because I believe that what God is doing in my life and how God is speaking to me will minister to you in what God is doing in your life. Because I know in a room of this size, in a church of this size, I know that there's people, especially in our culture, where we think broken is bad. If you're anything like me, I want to avoid breaking like it's the plague. I don't want to be broken. Why? Because in our culture, we throw away broken things. We throw away broken toys. We, 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 we get rid of uh, broken things. We hide or get rid of or throw away broken plates. It's the truth. It's just, it's our culture. And though broken isn't where we want to be, today you might find your place in life where you feel completely broken. You're faced with a broken relationship. Maybe you have some broken dreams or a broken heart, or maybe you just broke, you know? Come on, <laughs> testify in the house of God. You're struggling in the financial department. Or worse, even, maybe you just feel like a broken person. If you're here today, I want to tell you I get it. No, not in some, like, pastoral, preachy way, like, oh, I get it, I'm with you in the pain. No, 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 please hear me. I intrinsically, empathetically, spiritually, sympathetically, I feel you because I'm there. Literally, I feel kind of like I'm standing back and I hate brokenness. I, I hate brokenness. I'm looking at the broken areas in my life and I'm like, oh no, I, that's, that's not me. That's not my testimony. And if you know me, uh, you know that I hate brokenness so much that a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago, we, we launched a series on wholeness. I hate brokenness so much that we put together a five-week series. I was partial. I loved it. I thought it was a great series. By a show of hands, how many were here for that series, oh yeah, it was good. Five weeks on how our heart and our mind and our soul and our body can be made whole in Jesus. Now, I also had a caveat. The tagline for that series was, God will use you broken, but that was never his intention. God will use you broken, but he really wants you to be made whole. And though the, our, the intended state of our life is in brokenness, I do believe that God will use us. It's in the broken places of our heart that the light of God can shine through. I really do believe that. But what I didn't see, what I didn't want to see, or maybe even admit, is that oftentimes, oftentimes broken is the exact beginning of new and beautiful. 
Now that's not a thought to be held. That's a life to be lived. See, because we can write it down in our journal, we can highlight it and be like, oh, that's good. But this is where Sunday morning preaching becomes Monday morning living. That's when we have to apply what we've ingested. Otherwise, we're just coming in and we're listening to a good word and then we leave. No, 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 no. In this season of me personally, holding in my hands what feels like broken pieces of my life, what I want to do is I want to throw them away. God, I want to throw away these broken pieces. I want to throw away the broken things of my life. I'm forced to believe that I could actually build as I've been studying this week. And as God has spoken to me, I want to preach this as he's spoken to me straight to you. That God, if you're asking me to build with broken pieces, I'm believing that it could be the beginning of something beautiful. If you're the note taker in this place, I want you to jot down the title of today's message, which is Beauty in the Broken. Beauty in the Broken. I heard a quote this week from a seminary professor from uh, Moody College out in Chicago, and it's so good, I put it on the screen. You're gonna wanna take a picture of this, use it as a screensaver. And in this quote, he says that God will use, when God wants to do an impossible task, he takes an impossible person and crushes them. Only two people said amen for that one. I know, because I heard it and I was like, ew. That's ick. No, thank you. I don't want that. There's no spoonful of sugar to make this bad boy go down. It was just the truth. But it had my mind spinning, and it had me thinking, and it had me questioning. Now, God spoke this to me a couple weeks ago, but as I've been distilling it in my heart, and I believe that it's a word for us today, I, I was asking the question, how is breaking and crushing a good thing? God, if you want us whole, why are there moments in our life when we feel so broken? Well, looking at scripture, looking at scripture, there's characters in the Bible that we see that there is a good breaking and there's a bad breaking. So the question I'm asking is, if you are in an area of brokenness, is it a good breaking or is it a bad breaking? There's a difference. What's a, what's a bad breaking? A bad breaking is a breaking that happens because of sin that you caused or sin that you got caught up in. That's a bad breaking. Where do we see this biblically? It's an example of King David. King David slept with his neighbor, put a hit on his, uh, slept with his neighbor's wife and then put a hit on his neighbor. And, and that, there was brokenness that happened in the life of David. We also see this in the New Testament with Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts where they lied in the house of God and boom, they got struck dead. Now, this is a great learning lesson. Don't lie in the house of God today. I'm not gonna give you CPR. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, that's a bad breaking, but there's a good breaking. What's a good breaking? A good breaking is something that has been done to you. You didn't do it. Something that has been done to you. But it's a brokenness that God will use for his glory and for his good. We see this in the life of Joseph. Joseph was sold by his brothers as a human trafficking slave. But what we later on see is that he was raised to power and saved millions. Brokenness, a good brokenness, is when God wants to do something new in your life, but needs you to take up a different space or a different shape. We're gonna pick up where we started in Jeremiah 18, but we're gonna pick up right in verse four and we're gonna read this in context. Verse four says this, but the jar he was making did not turn out as he hoped, so he what? Okay, oh wait, hold on. Is the answer on the screen? No, okay, let's put the answer on the screen if we can. We're having some tech issues, glory to God, listen. So it hadn't turned out like he hoped, so he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Verse five says, then the Lord gave me this message. You put your name in there. The Lord gave Bianca this message. The Lord gave Chris this message. The Lord gave Susan this message. The Lord gave me this message, O oh, Israel, O oh, TFHOC. Can I not do to you as this potter has done to this clay? As the clay is in the potter's hand, so you are in my hand. But here's the beautiful news. The good news is that God will use both a good breaking and a bad breaking to form something new. He always does. And as David was caught in sin and he was guilty for sleeping with his neighbor's wife and then causing murder over Uriah, Bathsheba's husband, guess what? There was something new that happened. He cried out, when he was called out, he then cried out and we see his penning of his repentance when he says, create in me a new heart, O God and renew a right spirit in me. So even in the bad breaking, something new and good came out of the life of David. But repentance, 
happened before the creating. Well, two weeks ago, I felt like the Lord, uh, I felt like I was having a conversation with the Lord. And before you get it twisted, every time I hear like a pastor or a preacher say, I was talking to the Lord, it feels all spiritual. Like what do you say? Like ring, ring, hello, thy father. It just, I don't know, it just wakes me out. So when I say I was talking to the Lord, it was really just mulling over some musings and meanderings of what field muddled in my heart. But I had a conversation with God and I said, I feel like I'm walking around with broken pieces of my heart in my hands and it feels like every day there's a new piece of my heart that I'm forced to pick up off the floor. I'm breaking. How is this good? It's like I'm picking up these broken pieces and, and you expect me to build with these broken pieces. I was speaking at a conference and I was on my way home to Orange County when I was having this conversation. And before we were about to take off, we were all boarding the plane and I was waiting for the plane to take off and I opened up Instagram. Now don't sit there with your judgmental faces. Are oh, you waste time on Instagram? I love social media, okay? Don't judge me. And you're sitting there like you're not on social media too. But this is what happens when we wanna numb out. We scroll and as I am scrolling, something caught my eye. A video that either algorithmically, sovereignly, providentially ended up in my feed. But there's a video of potters taking broken pieces of discarded terracotta, grinding them up, broken pieces of pottery, grinding them up to a fine dust, adding water, blending them together to form a new clay of terracotta, which is then scooped out, put on this plate, and then what happens is that it rests to strengthen. Ooh, that's a preaching word right there. And all of a sudden, they're aerating this so that it could rest and air could strengthen this new clay so that it could be molded. New clay and new pottery from old clay and old pottery. I watched this video five times on the plane. I know this is gonna sound bonkers to people. I know it's gonna sound bonkers to people. But as I was watching this video, I felt like the Spirit of God was speaking to me like he did Jeremiah. Jeremiah went down to the potter's house and I was in the Delta airplane. I'm not saying, I'm not saying the Lord is Instagram. Do not quote me. Do not say I'm a heretic. What I'm saying is, is that the Lord is going to use the mouth of a donkey to speak to a prophet. He can speak through Instagram. That's all I'm going to say, okay? And as I was watching this, I realized that God will take the pieces that are discarded, broken, unusable, and turn them into something that is beautiful. And as I watched this video, I was reminded of Jeremiah 18. We read it at the beginning of service. I wanna read it again. But Jeremiah 18, one says this, the Lord gave another message to Bianca. Put your name in there. The Lord gave another message to you. He said, go down to the potter shop and I will speak to you. I'm not saying Instagram is the Lord. I'm saying God will use any way to get our attention, especially in broken places. God used this process of recreation to speak to me and remind me that even with the broken pieces of my life, he can make something be beautiful. He can make something new. And so as we were preparing for the Haggai series, Ruins to Revival, I asked the team, I said, hey guys, can we just, can we just push that back a week? I feel... Like what God is doing in my life, I've got to preach it as I see it. I got to preach it as I feel it. I got to preach it like it's now, like it's a hot piece of bread. I don't want it to go stale. I want you to eat what I'm eating so you feel what I feel because what I do believe is that there's people in this community that though our stories are different, our sorrow is the same. That, 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 though, that though our problems are different, our pain is the same. That though our brokenness is different, there is beauty just around the bend. The Instagram potters didn't know this, but the potters gave me a visual process of what I believe God is doing in my life and in your life. And yes, the process that they were giving me, that God could take the broken things in life and believe that God can use them for his glory and his good, they require something that will take a process out of us. So just as these Instagram potters took these broken pieces even when our life feels like it's completely shattered, guess what? God could take those broken pieces and give us a process of making things new. Because the breaking isn't where we start. 
excuse me, the breaking isn't where we end. The breaking is where we start. That's the beginning. So let's go through the process that the potters took us through. We are formed. God forms us in his image. He is the potter. We are the clay. And we read this, that he is the creator in Genesis, the beginning, the first book of the Bible. And in Genesis 2, 2, 7, it's on the screen. It says this, then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. We're formed by God. We are whole. During the time of creation, everything was perfect. In fact, in the Garden of Eden, the word that is used is the word called shalom. But then something happens. Sin enters the world and brokenness takes place. Where all of a sudden, the things that were whole, the things that were formed are broken. And maybe that's where you feel today. You feel like you are holding the broken pieces of your life. And you are saying, God, this is breaking me. What are you doing? Maybe you find yourself saying, God, my business is broken. My heart is broken. My marriage is broken. Sin enters this world and we find ourselves in a very broken place. And it's in these moments of brokenness where we ask the big questions of life. The questions that I've asked, and if we're honest, if we're really honest in the house of God, don't be Ananias and Sapphira. If we're honest in the house of God, you've asked these questions too. Why is this happening? How did you allow this? When will the pain end? When will the pain end? What I love is that the prophet Isaiah gives us this warning when we feel broken. You don't have to turn there. I just want you to, to, to look at the screen. But Isaiah 45, 9 says this. Woe to those. He said, be careful. Watch yourself. Woe to those who quarrel with the maker, who fight with the Lord. I got an opinion. Let me tell you. Isaiah's like, uh-uh, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Those who, that's my version. Those who are nothing but pot shirts, broken pieces. Among the potsherds on the ground, the broken pieces on the ground, does the clay say to the potter, what are you making with your hands? Does your work say the potter has no hands? During the breaking and the moments of feeling broken, we can cry out and say, God, what are you doing? God can handle our questions, but we can't quarrel with the Lord. I learned this beautiful lesson by watching my mom. I've shared this story before, but I was just with my mom yesterday and Watching her and her life flourish in this season astounds me, confounds me if I'm honest. My mom was diagnosed not with one but two forms of cancer. One of the brain cancers was in her brain and the doctors told my dad to prepare for a funeral and they gave her 30% chance of living. The brain cancer had targeted her central nervous system and it, had a fun it had affected her functional movement. She was so weak at times she couldn't move or raise her hands and she still was insistent on coming to church on the weeks that she felt strong enough to come and they would put her in a wheelchair and wheel her into the auditorium. She couldn't raise her hands to worship the Lord, but she had such a strength and confidence inside of her. People would come up to her and say, Millie, we're praying for you. And my mom would say, I'm praying for you. How could I pray for you? And with little mobility that she had, she'd slide her hand over their hands and pray for them. I was moved by her faith. But if I'm honest with you, I was a little bit angry as well. God, why? God, why? But you know something? In that season of brokenness in our family, I saw God move in mighty ways. I saw the faith of my daddy's church expand. And not just in my dad's church, but the global church. I mean, we got emails and letters from Japan and Montana, which might as well be Japan, if you know what I'm saying, so far away. The East Coast, Europe, sending letters to my daddy and saying, we're praying for Millie. We've never met Millie, but we're praying for Millie. The faith of the Capital C Church rose because my mom wasn't going to quarrel with God. I loved it. And more than that, my dad's church actually grew. My dad's church grew in size. It started to explode. And it was almost like the more that my mom was broken, the more other people were blessed. You know where we see this? We see this in the story. It's actually in a couple gospels. 
where Jesus was followed by tens and then tens became hundreds and hundreds became thousands. And scripture says that there was 5,000 men that had gathered to listen to Jesus preach in the countryside. And, and if theologians believe that there's 5,000 men, there's most likely with women and children, anywhere from 10 to 15 to 20,000 people gathered on the hillside, but none of them had food and they were hungry. Jesus says, hey, to his disciples, I want you to go out and find some food. They scoured the crowd and they found a little boy with a small lunch of fish and loaves, Cheez-Its and sardines. And they bring them in this little Ziploc bag to the hands of Jesus. And Jesus puts the bread in his hands and he lifts it to God the Father and scripture says he blesses it. And then you know what happens after? What does he do? That's right, Val, he breaks it. He breaks the bread. I need you to pick up what I'm laying down. Jesus blessed and then broke. I, it left me wondering, in this season, many years removed from my mom's brain cancer and her subsequent healing, I wonder if Jesus, if he allowed my mom to be blessed and broken so other people could walk in the miraculous. I wonder if what you're going through right now, I don't know, speculation, wondering that what if the Lord is blessing you for this series, this this season of brokenness because this is part of the process. That brokenness is the beginning of beautiful. After the breaking comes the crushing. We think it's done. I mean, this is it, right, God? I'm broken. No. Here is the crushing. This is the more that we feel like we can't take. Absolutely not. The breaking becomes the crushing. You think there's no more that I could take. I can't do it anymore. The breaking becomes the crushing. Jeremiah 18, four says this, but the jar he was making did not turn out as he hoped. So he crushed it into a lump of clay again and started over. Are you kidding me? This doesn't make sense. But for, in order for us to be used, we have to be broken. During this season of my life of walking around with broken pieces in my hands, I was left with two options. And guess what? You are too. In the season that my mom was going through her cancer, I was left with two options. I could be like pastor's kids or even just followers of Jesus and be like, bump this, I'm out. You didn't give me what I wanted. My mom's been serving you. I've been serving you. And this is how you're going to do us? That's so wrong. I'm going to walk away. That's option one. Option two is saying, I'm going to stay the course and I'm going to believe. What other choice do I have than to believe in the words of Jesus? And so in that season, when my mom had cancer, I stayed and allowed God to take the broken pieces of my heart and do something new. In this season of my life, as I'm walking around with what is broken and what is crushed, I'm saying, God, I'm not going to take my foot off the gas pedal. I'm going to put it to the floor, pedal to the metal. God, I love you. I'm going to serve you. And I trust you. It doesn't make sense. I feel crushed. But I trust you, God. I trust you, Jesus. I trust you. I trust you. And so I've decided that I'm not going to give any room for like bitterness to come into my heart. I refuse to get bitter or angry. I'm going to trust the Lord even though it don't make sense. And so I said, Bianca, you have to take your walk even more seriously than you do. I'm committed to journal every day and read God's word every single day. Now, no tea or shade, but for me, for me, for me, listen, for me, I'm not going to do a devotional. I'm not going to look on Instagram for the verse for the day, pray the devil away. No, 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 no. I need to dive into the word of God and feed me like it's my nourishment. So for me, I've been going through the one-year Bible. If you're familiar with the one-year Bible, it's for real Christians, okay? I have to. Just kidding. I get to. Read through the Old Testament, the New Testament, a psalm, and a proverb. That's a lot of Bible reading, y'all. That's, that's a lot. That's what you really love, Jesus. There are some days where I'm like, Lord, this is a lot. How, how much longer, Jesus? But I'm so committed because I'm like, I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to learn from the word of God, not on something that I want to hear, but on something I need to hear. Until I got to the book of Job. 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 Really? In everything that's going on in my life right now, I got to read the book of Job. Some of the sanctified saints in here are laughing because they're familiar that the book of Job is about a broken man, a broken man who's lost everything. I thought, I have a past, God. I don't have to read about someone else's trauma. I feel like I'm going through my own. Okay, we're good. We're good. If you're not familiar with Job, 
Job lost everything. In fact, he lost his animals, he lost his land, he lost essentially his business, his income now and his income for the future. That's broken, but it didn't stop there. He lost all of his children. He was married to a bitter wife, a nag, and his best friend sucked. Like with best friends like that, you don't need no enemies. You know what I'm saying? And here's Job who lost everything. That's not just broken, that's crushed. So I'm thinking as I turned to Job 1, I said, surely, Lord, I could avoid this. No, but I decided that God's timing is perfect. And if he led me to this book, it's because this message wants to speak to me. And I don't want to numb my pain or run from someone else's pain, even if they're dead like Job. I can learn from someone who is crushed and broken. Look at what Job said. As I was reading my Bible, regrettably, don't tell the Lord on me, but I got to Job 10. And in Job 10, verse 8, these are the words of Job. Your hands shaped me and made me. Will you now turn and destroy me? Remember me. You molded me like clay. Will you now turn me to dust again? Family, when we feel in life like God is breaking us, crushing us, now, the Lord is refining us to dust. When you feel, have you felt like dust? When you feel like there's nothing in your life worth value and your bones are broken and you feel like <sighs> dust, dust. Have you been there when your bones feel so brittle, so dry, you don't know what to, have, what to do next? I've got a process for you. This process that you might not understand or even like, I've got a process for you. Do you know what happens to the dust of terracotta when water is added to it? Oh, that's right, church. Good answer. Guess what happens? New clay is formed. When water is added to dust, oh, honey, clay is formed. This is the beautiful thing. Why is this a beautiful thing? Well, Jesus says, Jesus says, I am living water. People come in here with dry and parched souls where you feel, I'm so dry, I'm parched. I'm so parched, I'm dehydrated. And I got good news for you. In life's driest moments, God wants to pour out his water on our life to bless us. Isaiah 44, 3 says this, for I will pour out water on the thirsty land, my God, and streams from the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessings on your descendants. Do you know when you come to the house of God, your soul is refreshed? Do you know when you walk into the church, you might feel, as I hear every week from somebody, you might feel the energy in here is so good. It's like a vibe. There's such good vibes in here. Oh, when people tell me that, I have to just lovingly correct them and say, it's not vibes. That's the spirit of God in there. That's the spirit of God in here. We saturated and soaked in living water that he's pouring out. And your soul is so dry. Your soul is so hungry. You walk into church and what you feel is living water falling on the most parched grounds. I usually say this at the end of every service. But y'all aren't listening to me because you're like, oh, brunch is right now. I got to get my kids. I got to get out of here and avoid the parking. So I'm going to say this here so everyone hears me and it lives on YouTube. This is what I'm going to say. Give God one year of your life. Give God one year of your life and see what he can do. Now, when I say give God one year of your life, I'm not talking about showing up to church once every six weeks. You're early to movies, but you're late to church. You drop in a few bucks into the offering box, but the Starbucks that you walked in cost you $17.99. You want to leave early and come when you want. That's not pressing in. A little bit of shade never hurt nobody. You know, no shade, but some shade. I'm saying give God a year of your life and the person that you are, September of 2023, will not be the person you are in September of 2024. Mark my words. Mark my words. Are you prophesying? I sure am. Because when you give God your all, he will transform you. He will pour living water in the driest areas of your life. Trust him with your time. Trust him with your finances. You want to sit here and complain like God is asking me for 10% of my income? You tip the bad waitress 20% and you got no problem with it. Don't get me started. You give 
God space for the broken cracks of our lives so that water can go deep down. And you know, after living water is added, guess what? Clay rests to strengthen. Ooh, listen to me, please. The clay has to aerate. It has to oxidize. It has to sit. This is a word for somebody real quick. Listen to me. When you rest, when you're still, it's actually strengthening you. It's actually bringing out something beautiful and good. The last thing about me that I want to do is rest. I want to go, go, go. I want to do, do, do. I want, I want healing and I want it now. But listen, it's in the resting that God is reminding us of the reworking he wants to do in our hearts. Look at what Isaiah 64, 8 says. Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are the work of your hands. When we are ready, when we have sat and when we have strengthened, then we could be molded. Ooh, family molded. This is recreation. This is the forming. Oh, this is not the breaking. This is the beginning. This is not the crushing. This is the creating. And here's the crazy thing. In our act of surrender, we can't tell God what to do. The audacity. Are you kidding me? God, you don't want my opinion on my life? Guess what? That was funny. No? Just me? Okay, okay. I love that Isaiah corrects us and Isaiah comes for us with this reminder out of Isaiah 29, 16. He says this, you turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be the clay. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, you did not make me? Can the pot say to the potter, you know, every, you know nothing? No. God is in heaven. And he is asking, what are your dreams? What are your prayers? I want to answer that. But he is not in heaven like some sort of genie trying to give you every wish, want, and desire. Guess what? If that happens, we become like the Veruca salts of the world. But I want it now, daddy. Veruca, darling, I've got girls shelling peanuts by the hour, but they're jealous of me. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for you. I want us to know that we are held gently in the potter's hand to be formed, not to our desire, but what God desires. That is an act of surrender. And we take a cue from Jesus who says, not my will in the Garden of Gethsemane, but your will. And that is the beginning of something beautiful. This is the final step in the process that we're formed into something new. Yes, our good father, the creator of all things, can produce something beautiful and new and good. He could take the broken things of our life, the crushed things of our life, the dust that feels like our bones and make it into something new. That is why John says in Revelation 21, five, and the one sitting on the throne said, look, behold, I am making everything new. Broken is the blessing because broken is the sign of the new. The most poignant example we see of beautiful brokenness is seen in no more than the man named Jesus. He created hope in the lives of people. He provided the miraculous and healed people in their individual lives and corporate lives. This man named Jesus taught the truth and preached the good news. This man named Jesus lived a sinless life and ushered heaven down to earth. And one night, around a dinner table, he gathered his closest friends and he took some bread. As he held this bread in his hands on this night, the last supper before he would go to the cross, do you know what he did with the bread? He broke it. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. And then he said something crazy. He said, this is my body broken for you. Every time you partake in communion, do this in remembrance of me. It was actually prophesied this way by the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 35, 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. This broken man was whipped and scourged for you and for me. He was whipped and beaten, and there was a crown of thorns that was placed on his head. He was left on a cross, hanging there to die. 
discarded like a broken toy, he was put into a tomb and everyone thought that all hope was gone. But three days later, this man rose from the grave. The breaking wasn't bad. The breaking was the beginning because out of the broken things of life, new can become. Jesus said this, I have come to give you life and life abundant. Come to me with your broken pieces. Come to me when you're crushed. Come to me when you feel like you have no more value or worth than dust and I will do something beautiful in you. As Jesus broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, he said, do this in remembrance of me. And so that's what we're gonna do today. On your way in, you were given a communion cup. Inside there's a, a wafer and underneath is some grape juice. And today as a community, we're gonna partake in communion to remember what Christ has done for us. Remember what? Remember that we were once slaves to our trespasses, but we get to be free in Jesus Christ. Remember that our, our sins and our failures have separated us from God, but because of Jesus, we now get to be in a right relationship with God. Remember what? Remember that a sinless man died a horrific death for you and for me. Do this in remembrance of me, Jesus said. Scripture is also very clear not to take communion in an unworthy manner. If there's sin in your life, if you've never said yes to Jesus or have a relationship with Jesus, I don't want you to take the communion. Maybe you don't respond today. Maybe you're not ready. I will never force you. But if you're here today and you're ready to make that all-in commitment for Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior, I'm going to invite you in a second. Also, I know there's people in this room that maybe you've been coming to church, but you know that you've been living a life of sin, full-on sin, and you know that you want to repent, come back to Jesus. Because at one point you were walking with him, but you've walked away. If that is you, we're going to create a sacred space. I'm going to invite everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. To create a space for people to, to respond to the invitation to Jesus. If you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, or you want to repent and come back, I'm going to count to three. But one, by raising your hand, you are saying, I want Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Two, by raising your hand to receive Jesus, you are saying, the mistakes and my failures, what the Bible refers to as sin, could be forgiven because of what Jesus did on Calvary. And three, the same spirit that resurrected Jesus Christ from the grave will live in me. If that is you for the first time or you're repenting and coming back, one, two, three, will you raise your hand if you are saying yes to Jesus? God bless you. God bless you in the back, see you. If you're in the video experience or even online, God bless you, put a hand emoji in the chat box. Amazing. We believe that God can do a transforming work in your life, God bless you. We have a Bible for you, we have a resource for you that we wanna give you after service, but right now, since we've had this moment of introspection, I want all of us now to evaluate what is in our hearts. As we're remembering the sacrifices of Jesus, can we come to him with the pot shirts? the broken, crushed, dusty places of our life and say, pour out your living water on me. I do this in remembrance of you. Will you do me a favor, church? Will you pull the wafer, which is symbolic of the bread, out of your communion cup? Will you hold it as we do this in remembrance and repeat the words of Jesus over you? This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Will you partake of the bread? And then at the Last Supper, Jesus looks at the table knowing good and well that Judas is about to betray him, pours wine, looks at the disciples and says, this wine is symbolic of my blood that is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Will you partake of the juice? Spirit of the living God, you're welcomed into this space. As we do an evaluation of our hearts right now, God, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you. We praise you, God, that you take broken pieces of our life and create something new. So, God, we don't sit in brokenness. We don't wallow here. We stand in faith and declare that you will take the broken pieces of my life and create something new. Whether it's good brokenness that was caused by someone else or bad brokenness that I caused, take this brokenness, I repent and I say, use this, God. Use this to be a vessel of worth, a vessel of honor. Today we praise you and we worship you in Jesus' name.